presentation is a little bit about monetization, partly about growing forums. It's interesting to work with people here because a lot of people have either developed their forums years and years and years ago, or they are in a company that just goes and buys them. But I think few people here are actually like new people that are starting forums. So if there are already in the uh, audience, that would be great because you're gonna you know, learn something at least from what we've done. So another company I started at the same time at Drive Revenue was called Luxury for Play, uh, L4P.com, which is now um, one of the fastest growing um, basically glorified auto farms on the web. Uh, we started off with a shoestring budget, uh, just a couple talented individuals, me not being one of those talented individuals, uh, and we're able to grow it into a very successful form with a lot of branding. So we'll, we'll start with the presentation. So, you know, forums have been around forever. I know we talked about that a little bit today, but um, you know, there's an old quote, it's the web's top hangout for lonely folk, right? So that used to be basically <coughs> the case 15 years ago where it was just a bunch of nerds and it was a, a place for basically nerdy guys to talk about, you know, Dungeons and Dragons, you know, so that, that was the mid-90s. Um, so, but forums have been around before chat, they've been around before social media, before blogs, before Twitter, even before the dinosaurs. Um, the earliest forums dated back to 1994. David Bott, who's sitting in the back, started ABS forums in 95, back when he was 10 years old. Um, so these things have been around for quite some time. You could laugh. Actually, David's actually 28 now, so. So I get this question all the time, you know, it, it's funny when you're a forum owner, um, you know, because it seems pretty simple. Hey, we'll, we'll just get, we'll grab a bunch of people and we'll just start our own forum, right? Because it's so easy, right? It's just, it's just some content, I'll, I'll grab a topic, and some of my friends and, you know, we're angry at the owners, we're just gonna start our own forum. So, um, which, which all the forum owners know, and here, that's not very easy to start a forum at all. Actually, it's it's almost impossible, right, to really get a, a forum to start from nothing and grow to something. Um, but if you do, certainly pick a topic that you have some interest in or expertise in, right? So that way you can kind of grab your friends and bring them along and also be able to basically front load the content uh, on the forum. Um, another thing, you know, most forums are, are, are grassroots based, right? They're, you know, there's not, there's not VCs investing in a forum idea, generally, uh, you know, about shopping or about watches. Uh, so they're, they're not putting in, you know, they're not putting in hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars in the marketplace to fund your idea about, you know, a, a site about, you know, juicers, right? So this is something that's like grassroot driven, meaning, hey, you gotta front the money yourself. Uh, luckily, it's pretty cheap to actually start a forum, right? You buy the V-Bolts and software or platform that you want. Uh, it's a couple hundred dollars, you get some space, and voila, there you go. And we've all seen so many forums out there that kind of get to that spot, right? So they get a little bit of momentum, they get a bunch of their friends on, the forum is like really good for like a month, and then that's it, it's abandoned. Uh, I would say probably half the forums out there, if not more, are just abandoned. There's a little bit of content, sometimes you bump into it. Um, you know, the hardest part is getting up initial momentum, right? The most beautiful thing about forums is they take a life onto themselves, right? So once you have that momentum and you keep your members happy, you basically just sit back. And if you know how to monetize the site, it's just, it's, it's a golden goose, right? It keeps on producing, the content keeps on uh, growing and growing and growing over years. And as the content, content grows, you're also protecting yourself from competitors because, you know, I, I always use uh, David Bott in this case. Um, you know, there's, there's other, well-known um, electronics forums. He's more computer-based, but you know David has information dating back to the mid '90s of content. Like who? You know, no one's going to be able to to have that kind of depth. So every year a forum grows and is able to maintain. It's another year where you can feel a little bit more protected from someone else trying to start the same thing. Um, but once again, the momentum is very hard. It's it's especially when you don't have a budget. You know, so it's. You know, I only really have experience growing forums uh, with a little bit in the fashion space, but automotive. And within the automotive space, it's probably the most hyper-competitive market, right? So there's there's 10 forums for each make model in here. Um, you know, the only thing that forums really have to offer, right, is content, right? There's not a lot of visual pleasures on a forum. Um, it's all content. And so the most important thing is content. So we see a lot of the early forums and, and you know, forums that didn't take off, and you see like really short posts, there's not a lot of meat in there, and then the subject either just gets, you know, it doesn't get picked up from the search engines or it just kind of like tapers off, right? So content is king. You have to go in there and kind of seed the conversations. 
uh, without appearing that you're seeking the conversations, right? That's always the key. Uh, and then keep that momentum going. So why haven't forums become more mainstream? Well, you know, I, I like to say I think they're coming more mainstream within the last like two, three years, which is a great thing. Um, but you know what, the overall design is still very antiquated. It's, you know, it's the same thing, you know, when an average user would look at this and say, yeah, I don't even know what this does. It seems like it's from 1990. Like, it, it, it really has not progressed as much as it should have. Um, and another point that I brought up earlier, you know, most, most are started for passion and not for business. I, I would, how many people in here have started a forum for passion not, and then it turned into a business raise your hand? Yeah, look at that, practically half the, half the people in here. Um, and because of that, you know, it's, it, it's not designed. It doesn't, you, you really don't care about the design aspects of it. You know, it's not sexy, right? Forums are not sexy. Um, and it's never covered in media. You know, I mean, my grandmother, God rest in peace, before she died, she asked me a couple of years ago about Twitter. Now, she, she was 90 plus years old, did not speak much English, but she thought I had something to do with Twitter, right? So when was the last time you've ever heard of any news organization covering a forum? Never, right? It just doesn't happen. Um, and partly because traditionally big business was not behind it. Now we see a lot of change. We see Huddler, we see internet brands, we have vertical scope. Uh, certainly, you know, Viglin, what we're doing is really, you know, driving revenue, built their business out of the forum space. So we're starting to see big business get behind it. Um, you know, I, I think it's really changing for a, a place for us nerds to gather, uh, more as a depository for all information. And of course, you know, um, there's so many distractions now. Uh, 15 years ago, there was there was the bulletin board service. It was the only way to really communicate in somewhat real time with with uh, other people. But now, you know, there's Facebook, Twitter, cell phones, beepers, whatever, blogs. You know, it, it's it's never ending. So uh, there's a lot of competition that wasn't there 15 years ago. So here's a little story about a, a site that we started uh, same time I started driving revenue mid 2008 uh, called LuxuryForPlay.com. Uh, we um, we started with a very small budget, a couple thousand dollars, uh, but with a combination of like really, you know, you know, for design purposes for a forum, kind of the best in class design, branding, events, and and brand ambassadors. Uh, it's been able to grow, you know, organically into you know one of the uh, fastest growing uh, car forums, basically on the web. So, you know, we started in the automotive space, and as you know, most automotive automotive forums start because the users get angry at the forum owners, right? We see this again and again and again. It's like, screw you guys, we're gonna start our own site. It's gonna be 10 times better than what you guys had, and probably 10% of those actually work, right? So we see that all the time. You know, the core group of people get pissed off, they go to another site, start another site, there we go. Um, that was somewhat the case of, um, of what we did, but we saw a lot of opportunity there. We wanted to bring kind of the luxury goods market, um, into into play so we noticed on, on sites that you know that i met jack on that i met my other partner nick on was uh, sick beat online so it's interesting on an automotive forum that the conversation about automotive topics were probably half but the other half was travel it was uh, a lot of talking about watches because guys who are into sports cars are also into watches uh it was also into travel was also into motorcycles, lifestyle. So we saw a, a niche there that we can create a new forum that had kind of the best of everything, right? So it had a lot of conversations about watches, cars, travel, anything else you could think of that was kind of luxury based. Um, and we put our money, we, you know, we actually threw some money into it, not a ton, a couple, we all put in a couple thousand, but we continued to reinvest in the company. So we just didn't take all the money out and put it in our pocket. So, and it was basically a full-time job for all of us, for about three of us, and then we got some volunteers to help us as well. So the first thing <coughs> we went out and did is kind of di differentiate for us from everyone else. We went out and bought a three-digit domain, uh, l4p.com, which, which was kind of pricey. Three-digit domains are not cheap, right? So right there, everyone knew that we were gonna, we were gonna do something more serious, right? This was not gonna be a fly-by-night forum, that we we're actually gonna do some cool stuff with it. And that's actually uh, Nick's car, it will be here on a, Presentation later. Um, another thing we we I can't I, I don't know how I came up with this idea, but it was kind of funny. Um, so four is in the middle of our name. So we had everyone. Yeah, I came up with this idea just to take a picture of showing the four, right? So we had everyone from Jay Leno 
starting to do it. We got pictures of him doing it. And this is actually, you know, someone asked him to do it, and he's like, sure. Um, to all these different stars, we had Alfonso Ribeiro, the, uh, the girl from Housewives, a crazy one, which is pretty much every girl in Housewives, yeah. Uh, Brechin, yeah, total ding dong. Tony uh, Hart, Stark, um, the old San, uh, San Francisco mayor, Jerry Rice, the list goes on. Uh, so it actually took off, so we had like kids, like people would have a baby, and they would like form their fingers into a four and take a picture of it by our logo, and uh, it grew so much that we actually, uh, we actually started selling merchandise off of it. So it was a whole new channel, people weren't begging. We, we actually came out with a couple t-shirts, a couple logos, and it was sold out within a day. Uh, we had made thousands of dollars just by selling our logo. So we had basically no marketing budget, but we knew that these brand ambassadors would be marketing our product for us, which, uh, which it worked out really well. All right, this is, this is an incredible story. This is a, we actually hosted uh, the Gold Rush Rally, which is a giant car rally that goes state from state from state. It's all exotic cars, it's a lot of fun. Um, I had one of the members come up to me and he's like, I, he's like, Ray, I'm really excited to meet you. First, it's always creepy when your members come out and they're like way too excited to meet you like you're a movie star. Um, and he's like, I gotta show you something, all right. So he, uh, he lifted up his shirt to show me this. <laughs> Our logo tattooed on himself with the dimensions of like four feet by two feet. <laughs> I was literally sick to my stomach. <laughs> So, like any, uh, like any person who owns a forum, who has a sense of humor, of course I looked at him dead in the eye with a very straight face, and I said, his name was Justin, no affiliation. I said, Justin, you know we just sold our site to Internet Brands, right? And he literally turned pale as a ghost for like five seconds, and I just, I just stared at him, because I knew, I knew I was going to tell him in a second, I was just kidding. But I was just looking at him, and he turns like bleach white. And I'm like, I'm just kidding, dude, that's awesome. He's like, oh, cool, cool, yeah, I'm not like a care because I really want this. I'm like, oh my god. That's when I realized like we took this whole thing, the whole branding thing almost a little too far. People be, became actually obsessed with what we were doing. So it was a great success, but I mean, that tattooed on the side was this big, crazy. Another thing we did that no one was doing at the time is uh, one of uh, my partners was uh, also a designer in his spare time, really talented designer. Um, and what we would do is we would make custom avatars that were professionally done, because we all know, you know what the avatars look like. They always look kind of, either there's no avatar, it's just a name, or it's, it's done very poorly. So what we did is we started a thread, and the thread was, you know, post four pictures that you want to include in your avatar and we'll do the rest in your name. And sure enough, we made thousands and thousands and thousands of avatars. Now, what we also did is we also put our L4P.crown in a lot of them. So we branded each one. So these avatars were so good that people, you know, people are just not on one car form, they're on every car form. So they started using these avatars on all, the, all their competing forms, which eventually the other forums kind of caught on and said, look, you can't use First of all, you can't post any picture with someone holding up a four sign. You know, so there was like incredible shots, like the first Veyron unveiled in, in supercars that no one else had seen, and there's some jackass in the front going like this. <laughs> you know? And then they posted across all the car forms, they're like, no, no more of that. And you can't use L4P.com's Amtar in, in our site as well. So it was a huge success. Uh, people have taken these avatars and put them on all the forms, even outside of Automo. So that was another thing that we did. Didn't cost us anything. It was kind of time time consuming, but then we actually got uh, one of our members who was like, you know, a young kid, and he was really talented. He actually took that over, and he loves it. So he makes these all the time for people. All you have to do is request it, and they'll send it over. 